Welcome to our video on how to play the remainder game. A division game that involves sharing a set of objects and calculating the remainder. Today we're going to play the remainder game. So this is a game that involves sharing out a collection of uh, things. So we have chosen that we're going to share out jelly beans today because then we hopefully can eat our winnings. The other thing you need is a dice. And the thing that we're going to be thinking, or the things we're going to be thinking about when we play the game is we're going to identify the total being shared and we start with 31 of the object. We're going to create the number of groups we're going to share it into by rolling the dice. Once we've shared the jelly beans out into that number of groups, we're going to identify what the quotient is, which just means the answer or the number in each group. And we're going to identify whether we've got a remainder or not. Now we want to get a remainder because we keep the remainder, there are winnings. So the bigger the remainder, the more jelly beans we're going to get to eat in the end. Right, Luke's going to go first and he's going to roll the dice. Six. So Luke has thrown a six, so he's going to share the 31 jelly beans out into six equal groups. What's your prediction for each group, Luke? Well, I know I'm going to get a remainder because I know that 31 is not a multiple of 6. Okay, can you think of a number just below 31 that is a multiple of 6? 30. So I'm probably going to get a remainder of 1. And how many do you think is going to be in each group? Me, 5. So you think there's going to be 5 in each group. So what fact do you think is he using? What do you think? If he thinks there's 5 in each group and there's 6 groups, Yep, I'm not wrong. Okay, Five so... Group and I get one jelly bean to eat. So our total being shared was 30. Put it in your pot. The group number of groups was six, because that was the number we've rolled. How many was in each group? Five. Five was in each group, and Luke got a remainder of one. Okay, let's... So... Oh no, sorry, it wasn't 30 being shared, it was 31 oh, to start with. 31. But for our next go, if Luke's had a remainder of one, how many jelly beans have we got left? We'll have 30. So we'll have 30 left. Right, would you like to roll the dice now? Five. All oh, right, so. Oh, you are you the, that's no remainder. Okay, so. I, you, it's you don't, my prediction. Okay, what do you reckon? There's, there's 30 jelly beans. There's going to be a remainder of five. Okay, you try it then. So you or zero. Okay. One, two. So let's get our five equal groups. That's six groups we start. That's five groups. So how many do you think is going to be in each group, Luke? Five. So you think five lots of five are going to be 30? Well, no, six. Sorry, six. So you think there's going to be six in I each group? I don't think group. there's going to be any remainders. Okay. Okay. Uh, no. Wait, are they equal, Alan? No, that one needs to go to that one. Okay, so have they all now got the same number in each group? Yep. So how many is in each group, Helen? What's the quotient? Six. Six. And have you got a remainder? No, no remainder. So you don't get any uh, jelly beans that go. And is our total going to stay the same for my go? Yeah. Yeah, we're still going to have 30, aren't we? Okay, so my turn now. I've got a four, so I'm going to share the 30 jelly beans into four groups. Now I think I think there's going to be at least five in each group because I know that five lot. Oh no, uh, four lots of five are 20, and I know I've got. So I'm going to start by sharing out five in each group. Do you have five as a remainder? You don't think I'm going to have a remainder? No, you have five as a remainder. Five as a remainder. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a look. 
So have I got an equal number in each group? One, two, three, four, five, three. I've got seven in that one. I've got seven in that one. I've got seven in that one. And I've got seven in that one. I've got a remainder of two. So I shared 30 into four equal groups. I have seven in each group and I have two as a remainder. Okay. So I'm going to win those two. So how many have we got left for our next 28. go now? 28. Right. So your turn. Oh, I need to roll again because oh. I've got a one. Okay, we're playing the rule. If you roll a one. And again. Three. three. So we've got 28, haven't we? And we're splitting them into three equal groups. Do you think there's going to be a remainder? Yes. Yeah? Because yeah. yeah. there's 28 in the three times table. Nope. Uh, right, check your groups. Are they equal? Please me. Don't be. What? Mm, I have... One left over. So how many's in each group? Um, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Because do we know that three times nine is twenty-seven? Yeah. So we can use our fact, can't we? And there's a remainder okay. of one. So your turn to roll the dice. Roll again because we've got a one. Six. Right, so we've now got 27 left. And we're sharing them into six equal groups. Are we predicting we're going to get a remainder? Uh, let's hope. Let's hope. I think we will because 27 is an odd number and we're splitting it into an even number of groups. So I think there might be some yeah. left over. I also don't think 27 is in my six times table. Yeah. Okay, how are we doing? Good. How many have we got in each group so far? These are the ones you've got left, aren't they? Yeah. So is that going to be your remainder? Yeah. So how many is in each group? What's the quotient? The quotient is four. Four. And what's your remainder? Three. Three, okay. So you put your remainder in your jar. Okay. And how many have we got left now? We had 27. We've taken three away from the remainder last time. So that we've now got... we've now got 24. 24. The idea is you keep going, taking turns, sharing out the jelly beans until you've got only two left. And that's the end of the game. So a reminder of how to play. Equipment you'll need is a dice and 31 small objects. This can be sweets like in the video or it could be counters, cubes, small toys, pasta shapes, whatever you would like. To support the understanding you can use the speaking frame. I'll go through this in a moment. So to remind you how to play, you roll the dice. If a one is rolled then you roll again. If any other number is rolled that's how many groups you're going to share the objects into. So if five is rolled, you're sharing them into five equal groups. Once the objects are shared, you decide whether there's a remainder or not. The remainder is then kept by the player who rolled the dice and the quotient or the number in each group is identified. Work out how many objects are left. So if the remainder was one, there'll now be 30 objects left. The next player rolls the dice and shares the objects out into the number of groups rolled. So if a four is rolled, you would organize the objects into four different groups, work out what the remainder is. If there was 30 objects to start with, then be a remainder of two. Those are kept by the player and then 28 is the amount that's then shared. You keep going, rolling the dice, sharing out the objects until there's only two objects left. You then total how many objects you collected as remainders and the person with the most objects is the winner. 
to support the understanding of what is being done during this game. This speaking frame can be really helpful. It helps keep track of how many objects are being shared. It also reminds the children that the number that they roll with the dice is the number of groups that they're sharing the objects into. The quotient is the amount that's in each group once they've been shared. Identifying this is actually identifying the answer to the calculation that they're doing. So the calculation is the total being shared divided by the number of groups that they're sharing them into and then the quotient is the answer, the number in each group. So this would become the calculation. So you would perhaps have 31 divided by 5 the quotient will be 6 in each group and then we've got the remainder, the how many, how many counters that aren't in a group would be 1. So this supports the understanding of the calculation that's being done during the game. It's important to have this conversation whilst playing as the children will be busily sharing out the objects and not thinking about the actual calculation that they're doing each go and this is what we want to practice. This game supports the concept of division by sharing. It helps recognise that when we divide by sharing, the groups that we share the objects into must be equal, and anything that doesn't equally go into a group becomes the remainder, so it helps the children understand what a remainder is. When playing the game, you can ask the children to predict what they think the answers might be by using their known facts, helping them to make the link between multiplication and division. Whilst you play, talk to the children and get them to reason about their thinking. How do they know there's going to be a remainder? So for example, if you're dividing by 5 and you've got 27 objects left, get the children to think about what do all numbers in the 5 times table end with? So they all end in a 0 or a 5. So if we've got 27 objects left, we're definitely going to have a remainder. This reasoning about numbers is really important and it will help the children make links between the learning that they're doing. This game could be adapted, so rather than sharing the counters or the objects that you have, you group them. So the number rolled by the dice this time, rather than representing the number of groups that you're going to share the counters into, represents the number that's going to be in each group. So for example, if we rolled a 4 and we had our 31 objects, Rather than sharing them into four equal groups, we organise the objects into groups of four. So we'd end up with seven groups of four and we'd have three as a remainder. So the answer or the quotient will be the same. There will be seven groups and the remainder will still be three. But how we've organised the objects is different. It's important that children can both divide by sharing and by grouping. So this subtle adaptation to the game will help the children understand these two different models of division. If you do adapt the game and rather than sharing the counters or the objects you group them, the speaking frame will be slightly different. Rather than saying the total being shared you're saying the total being grouped is. But rather than the dice telling you how many groups you're sharing it into it tells you how many in each group so as 3 is rolled, you would say the number in each group is 3. The quotient then becomes the number of groups that you make, rather than how many in each group. And then finally, the remainder is the same as when sharing, it's the number that are left that can't make an equal group. There's a subtle difference here, and playing the game to both share the objects and to group the objects will be really beneficial for the children. They will notice that actually if we wrote it as a calculation, the calculation will be the same, but actually what we're doing is different. I hope you enjoy playing the remainder game, initially by sharing the objects and then moving on to grouping them.